Hi, Rob from Power Learning Solutions here. Well, if you're like me and you have a lot of papers to grade for your students in a short period of time, you're probably constantly looking for some tips and tricks to help you automate things a bit and speed up the grading process while still giving that quality feedback to your students. So here are some tips and tricks that I like to use when I have a lot of papers to grade. And basically what I like to do is to use a spreadsheet for for uh, capturing my grades and I also like to use rubrics to base those grades upon and I do a mail merge function using the Excel and Microsoft Word mail merge, fun uh, mail merge functions to help me spit out uh, some of these rubrics really quickly uh, to help me automate some of my grading. So here's how I do that. I have got here some sample grades from some of my students and uh, some sample papers. So I'm going to open up one of those uh, sample submissions here, which uh, I have redacted. This is not an act, any actual student information that I'm showing you here. Uh, so I've got a student paper. Now, in this case, I've given my students a template to use for submitting their paper so it doesn't completely comply with APA formatting guidelines. But I do have some stuff that I want to mark for them, and I do have some rubrics that I will be basing that on. So I have two different rubrics that I'm going to be using here. One is the actual assignment rubric, and the other one is an APA uh, paper writing checklist that I've created based on some of the most common comments that I tend to give to my students and to embed in their papers. So I wanted to automate that process a bit. So here is how I have done that. I have a gradebook set up using Microsoft Excel and I'll open that up to show you what that looks like. And inside of this I have my students. I have two tabs, one for the rubric and one for the APA checklist. Now I have most of these students already graded here. For the rubric I have letter codes set up for, er for each of the categories that are on my rubric. So I'm going to open up the actual rubric here and show you what that looks like. And this is the rubric that I would give back to my students. So I have different categories here, the relevance of uh, their writing, its coherence and clarity, uh, the depth of their use of uh, citations and sources and references, the quality of their writing, in this case the use of this uh, submission template that I just talked about, and their overall APA formatting. And I also have a space for some comments, and I'll show you how all of this gets pre-populated. Uh, based on the uh, spreadsheet rubric. So what I'm going to do now is go to the mailings tab here. I want to connect this rubric to my actual spreadsheet so that I can pull this data. I want to choose uh, an existing list, not the Outlook context. So uh, choose the existing list here and I'm going to go and find this spreadsheet that I had set up. So I have that under a folder here called Grading Demo and I have the sample gradebook. And now I just pick which one of the tabs I want. In this case, it's the rubric tab. So everything is good here so far. Now I just want to make sure that I have all of my uh, data ready to uh, embed. So I have some of this data uh, pre-populated here. But to add this, basically, you just go to the Insert Merge Field tab and you pick the fields from your spreadsheet that you want to add. So I want to add first name, last name, so this will give me the student's information. I have these here which line up with all of these lettered columns here. And I'm just going to go over here and I'm going to add the first name back in again so I can personalize my feedback to my student. And I've added the uh, comments field here, which I've also pre-populated into my spreadsheet. So now I'm going to look at uh, the student submission here. And I'm going to uh, give it a grade. I've already pre-read this paper, so I can go ahead and give it some grades on this rubric. And I'll give them a two for their relevance. And uh, the coherence was pretty good. I think they could have had a little more depth to their references. Uh, their writing style was good, but not 100%. So I'm going to give them 1.5 out of 2 on that. No problems with their use of the template. 
and there were a couple of minor problems when I read through this with APA. So half a mark out of that maximum of a one gives them their 8.5 out of 10 here in this column. I always hit save after I'm done entering a student in. So now I would go back to my rubric here and I select my student from the list. Uh, you can leave them all selected if you want to perform a mail merge if you're using Adobe uh, Acrobat Pro and you want to spit these all out all at once. But in this case, I'll do just one student. So I'll do my first student, sample student here. And now everything is pre-populated for me. I just need to save my rubric as a PDF file. And it will go ahead and save this out for me. So I'm going to put this under a folder called rubrics just to make it easy. I've created a stem for my file name here. So this is sample student one. So I'll just add their first name here. And now I've got a rubric for that student that's going to save. The other thing that I have gone and created was a checklist of some basic APA formatting um, comments that I typically give to my students uh, in, in their papers. These are the most common comments that I have found when grading papers. So I'm going to look at that list now and I need to open up that file. So here's my APA paper writing feedback checklist. Uh, probably 20 or so of the most common comments that I give my students and rather than copy pasting them into my students papers or typing them out manually every time I've gone ahead and put them into a similar rubric here. In this case I've put in NA for the first two. For typical APA format papers I would leave these first two available for myself to check off but because I've given them a template I don't need to worry about telling them whether or not they've met the basic formatting guidelines and the, the header and footer guidelines. That's in the template for them. So now I'm going to connect this document to my uh, spreadsheet. So again, I will use an existing list. And I will find that, uh, that checklist under my grading demo folder and this time I'm going to choose the checklist tab. So as you can see I've got NA in the first two uh, columns here, the first two rows here because it doesn't apply and this corresponds to my spreadsheet where I have NA listed here for the first two columns. It doesn't apply in this case because I have already given them a template and I don't need to worry about uh, giving them feedback on whether or not they've met the general formatting guidelines or the formatting for headers and footers on their pages because those are provided in the template. So I'm working with uh, sample student one here and I've looked over their paper already and I've noticed a few things. Now there's no issues with their keywords, all of that's fine. Um, a lot of these comments don't necessarily apply but there were a couple of things that I did notice that stood out to me so I'm going to check them off in this case. Uh, one of those things that I noticed was their use of the en persant instead of the word and in uh, one of their in-text citations here you would only use this en persant inside of an in-text citation not in line in the main text of your sentence so I'm going to give them some feedback on that and there were a couple of minor issues with their references lists such as this title here and another web-based resource that they have so I'm just going to give them a quick little indicator that they need to review those things so I'll go back to my spreadsheet here all of these are fine so I can ignore that I have a category here for the use of and versus the ampersand and another one here for proper uh, citation of web-based resources because these are the types of resources that I find are the most troublesome for students when they're writing APA papers. So now I have um, this ready to go. I can go back to my checklist document here. I can uh, edit my recipients list and I only want my first student in this case. So uh, I preview my results my checklist is ready to go. I can uh, save this as a PDF again for that student. And now I have a uh, rubric for them with their grade on the actual elements of the assignment, as well as a checklist for them to give them some general feedback on the mechanics of their writing.